have you ever heard of um banana ball no never heard of it it is a baseball league that is like all skill plays and trick plays and they play with a yellow baseball and it's an entertainment like it's like thing. the savannah bananas yes them the savannah bananas yes they're like the harlem globetrotters but on a baseball diamond did you watch them play yeah i was watching it with with, with grandpa dude these guys are pretty sick at baseball yeah a lot of them play d1 dude they're good they're they're nasty and then they just like do some pretty cool shit at top speed while it's like high school musical bro it's like watching high school musical <laughs> live that scene when they're like playing baseball and yes. then dancing yeah watching that Ooh, live uh hit it out of the park <laughs> i know you can you could do it this way i could do it that way <laughs> zach efron Fuck out. yeah zach, zach solo from <laughs> first time on zoom so you go nice to meet you Nice to meet you, man. Heard a lot about you from this guy. Yeah. Hey, I'm surprised you've never done one of these before because when I look at your elite prospects, you've got the I most know. media links ever. Like, and it's like the amount of articles written up <laughs> about you or that you're a part of is insane. There's like there's like 15 articles here in media and articles. <laughs> well, let's let's add one more, I guess, right? Might, might as well. I'm happy to be on here though. I don't know why we haven't done this sooner, so. Well, yeah, no. was Northeastern. We didn't like each other when he did that. No. Yeah, no. I was actually just watching That's the right. highlight of when he uh, <laughs> got that back check on you. Of course, he sent it to me right before we hop on. No, nah, in the in, in the bean pot. Of course he did. Of course he did. <laughs> that was a back check that saved the trophy for you. I can't believe it. Oh man, That's never awesome. forget that one. Let me fire up this intro and then we'll continue to roll. Joining us today is former second round pick to Detroit. He is a Shattuck St. Mary's alum, a USHL alum, an NCAA alum between Boston University and Arizona State. He is an expert of the toe drag, my line mate, Duck. <laughs> Welcome to the Buzz Pond. Thanks for having me, fellas. Thank you, Zach. Hey. My line mate, the Co better toe dragger. <laughs> Couple things. Do you know why Z said expert of the toe drag? Have you seen that on your elite prospects? No. Is that what it says? has a quick, accurate release on his shot, and he is an expert at using toe drags to get around defenders. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, we're using, we're using the toe drags to get off the wall this year, me and you, Zach. We, that's, yeah. that's, we, we changed our toe drags from defenders to wall plays. Yeah, <laughs> literally pick up rims and find the middle. <laughs> but um, toe drag is off the wall, hit, I, hit I, the center. I'd love to start this off with uh, why does everyone call you Ducky? I messaged a few of a uh, few guys, a few friends that we have in common, a few guys that I saw played with you, and everyone's like, ah, oh, Ducky's a beauty, Ducky's a man, Ducky's the hardest worker, but everyone's <laughs> Ducky, Ducky. Yeah, so it's actually, it's not it's not as fun of a story as I wish it could be. It could be a fun one, but there's a, Long Island, there's a baseball team by my house, minor leagues, Long Island Ducks, a couple months old. We would always go to those games when we were kids, and my older sister couldn't couldn't for some reason say Robert and she just started calling me duck and ducky and just stuck through every every hockey program I've been to all my friends it's literally all I've known as today is ducky if I hear Robert it's like a little shock to me right now <laughs> <laughs> what a nickname yeah it's actually a pretty cool it's, story and they give up these like little quackers and I, and I love the quacker so I would always have one like it was like a little necklace with a quacker on it so it looked like I had a bill I was just ducky from there on out I met a guy just recently, and I think he tried to claim giving you the nickname Duck. Who? Jimmy Mazza. Oh, yeah. He was – Maz was an original one with Ducky. He was he, he was my camp counselor when I was small. Whenever When we were like eight years old, we were, I was growing up and through Jack Rag Attack Hockey Camp, and he was my camp counselor every single year. And obviously now we're older, we're friends. So he he's, I've been Ducky to him since I've known him for 10 years. 15 years that's super cool he he but pulled he, out he pulled out his snapchat he said look at this video of duck you were doing push-ups with a cast on and you had a buzz cut and you had the basketball shorts that were way past the knee like usually tell mom like hey mom like, oh right yeah I had, the, I had the nike elite on too probably yeah <laughs> yes you nike did. elite socks up to my up to my mid calf but yeah hey I would that cast that cast was cut off two nights later so I can play in the be in the chowder cup. 
Nice. Talk a little bit about your childhood mm-hmm. uh, growing up. I mean, I think your dad's a hockey guy because I saw his Instagram is Dusty Dangler24. <laughs> he's he's the craziest hockey parent ever. He he loves hockey more than anyone. He, stu- he just knows the game more than anyone. And we gave him the name Dusty Dangler when we were 13 years old. Our whole team, we came up with his Instagram for him, Dusty Dangler. And it's because he his hands were nasty when we were growing up. We all thought they were... They were gross, and so we gave him Dusty Dangler. But he was he was huge for me with hockey. He loved it. He played uh, he played in college D three at St. John's, uh, so he he was obviously real familiar with it growing up. And as soon as I was able to walk, he put me on rollerblades on the carpet before I, like before I could even walk, just getting balance and skates. They taped my he t- also taped my stick to my hands as a lefty, so he could teach me because he was a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. And I know you mentioned Chowder Cup. I saw you played a ton of summer tournaments, just always staying on the sheet as a young kid. But the first team on here is uh, Long Island Royals 13U AAA. Now, I don't know uh, much about New York hockey, but the guys that I know from Long Island played for the Long Island Gulls. So is that like, did th- that turn into the Royals or is that a completely different thing? Completely different organization. So yeah, I played for Long Island Royals my whole my childhood. All those youth hockey years, I was for the on the Royals. Then there was three major teams Long Island: was the Gulls, the Royals, and then the PAL Junior Islanders. So those are three, and kind of just get a lot of the kids switching throughout teams. Some of my best friends played for all three of them. So it's just like really wherever you can. And and the Chowder Cup is probably the best tournament of all time. I played, I played. Uh, 2000s NBL one division there, so I was playing like 14 games a week at, and it was staying on the sheet at that at that young. You just get so many touches of the puck, and you just learn the game so well when you when you're that. You got all the energy in the world when you're 12 years old. You can play as many games as you need in the weekend. How many Chowder Cups did you win? I actually didn't win a lot. We lost my my one team. We lost in the finals to the Minutemen Flames four years in a row. We four years in a row we lost them in the overtime, but I. I think for the 2000s, I won three. I think me and, me and Ross Mitten won three together. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think so. Which I, is not a lot for how many I played in. But it's still hey, three championships. Yeah. No, I know. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> the Chowder Cup was like my favorite tournament because on Sunday, you could play like four games. It's like one 30-minute run clock time. And like, if you score first, mm-hmm. you're probably gonna win the game. <laughs> like, you just beat <laughs> the puck and then game four. It was just who, literally, it was just who could score first. Who could, who could put two goals on the board first and then those games. Those are the best. And you get, and you know, you're playing four games that day. So you're just, oh, that was so nice. I missed that time. So the Long Island Royals, did you guys make a good push at a national championship when you were there? So we, we would have. Uh, our 14, my banner major, or our 14 year year was the first year they took away the 14 year national, or whatever it was, whichever oh, one oh, they wow. took away nationals for that year. We won New York State. That was our only time we won the New York State championship, was that year. I'm getting sprayed with the sprinkler. <laughs> now we're good. We're just missed. I'm just getting missed it. We're good. But yeah, it was uh, the, that was the first, it was the first year we missed, we, we would have made nationals and they took it away that year. Wow. Is, when we, I, were so, we were so upset. Wow. When, when I was 12, I was on the Florida Everblades and we lost in the national championship to the Long Island goals. AJ Drobot, Dante Paleco, yep. Sean Biley. The only three guys I know on that so team. I, that yeah, I think it was two years after that. It was the 12 year. You're right. It wasn't the 14 year. That's what I think they took that away. It was after that year or either that year or the year after they, they stopped it. Yeah. That was, that was devastating. Do you know those that guys? That was uh, a Oh yeah, I know the guys and the goals. The goals are winning a lot of. They won the national couple of national championships in the last two years, also with Vinny Smith as the head coach. Really? Wow, that's a. Oh yeah, they're, you, they're doing well. Long Island, Long Island hockey's coming up right now. <laughs> Fucking you right. You lit it up, uh, Long Island Royals, especially your second year when you played 14U. I think you were playing a year up as well. Um, yeah. 36 games, 34 goals, 35 assists. 69 points uh you mentioned ross mitten i'm assuming he's one of your boys uh because he put up 60 that year with you like you guys just playing together kind of torching the league up yeah i mean it, the ayhl was so fun we were just we had a good team that year we really did it was that was probably our one of our one of our best teams out of the 10 years i played there it was and we just marched <laughs> it up as you said he yeah. was we were on a line together and we just had a lethal power play. We would run 
what we call the drag on the power play. And I would skate behind the net and send it behind my back to him. And it was auto goal only in that age. Auto goal, every power play. <laughs> like the short side play where the goalie thinks you're going behind? Just whoop. Yeah, you just uh, you go behind. Yep. And you have goalies on this side and the puck's over there. <laughs> it's the best play ever. I wish we could run it still. How did you end up going to Shattuck? I mean, I want to talk a little bit about Shattuck. I was there for a year. Yep. One of the best years of my life, to be honest with you. And I just want to know, like, how you got recruited to go there or uh, whose idea it was and then, like, what, what what your experience was like. Yeah, definitely. So growing up when I was around that age, there wasn't a ton and there, on Long Island once you – go past 14 or 15 now like they've they're more made as a hockey place so now they have more teams but when I was growing up there wasn't much and I remember I, I saw a magazine with Crosby on the front in a Shattuck jersey and Crosby I loved Ovechkin growing up so Crosby was my favorite player but I was like whoa like and I looked into it I was like that's the coolest school ever like I want to go there I want to go there my whole like since I was 10 and and my dad, when we, when I finally came to that age my dad's like well do you really want to go and I applied and I, and I got waitlisted for hockey for my first year. So wait, did I. Wait list for my Bantam team and then ended up going. Did you? Did you yeah. end up going? You ended up going though, right? Yeah. So what happened? I think I had like is actually a really... 110 points or something that year. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have 100 points, but uh, that, <laughs> but I remember I actually have a similar story to that. It's like a kid was in the <laughs> locker room talking about Shattuck and he mentioned that Sidney Crosby went went there and that all these guys went there and I was like holy fuck like Sidney Crosby went there and I went home that night and you go on the website at Shattuck and you see all the guys that have played in the NHL they have the list of the alumni that are now active in the national or have played in the national and you're looking at that list and you're like wow that's a lot of guys like I could be a part of that list like this place is amazing and I was on that website literally every day Mm -hmm. just looking at the list looking at the picture of the school and then I went to try out and yeah, I got waitlisted and we started looking at other options, whatever. And next thing you know, we got a phone call like, Hey, there's a spot for you if you want it. And man, it was, it was the best, one of the best years of my life for sure. Like just, uh, uh, just growing up so much, you know, like being away from home. And I mean, talk about your experience. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you just, you learn how to live at 13, 14 years old. You learn how to take care of yourself. It, so you, you grow up as a human and you're more mature than you are for your age coming out of there. And especially when you're making the transition from Shattuck to juniors, USHL, or wherever you're going, it's, it's hard. But once you have that under your, that experience under your belt, it makes it so much easier to make that jump. And Shattuck is great. Shattuck was great. That place is awesome. I mean, you know it. You've been there. It's, it's just in the middle of nowhere, or Faribault, Minnesota, and it's just a hockey madhouse. And they love it there. And you're playing – that, that place is so cool. You're playing all, all the – Parade field and everything that it's just so cool. It's so beautiful there. Oh man, you your can't first get that day, else. your first day you arrive, oh. you see everybody's on the parade field. You don't know mm-hmm. anyone. You're you're in the dorms. I was in clap, and you walk into the dorms and you see everyone's moving in, everyone's parents. And at first you're like a little bit like I don't know, I don't know. And then all the parents kind of leave around the same time, and the guys kind of get together. I remember for us it was like right on the stairs. And we just get together. We kind of introduce each other. We're shooting the shit for like two minutes. And then all of a sudden we go out in the parade group as a team, like as a group kind of, even mm-hmm. though we just met each other. Oh, yeah. Just, here we go, man. You're just meeting everyone. Everyone's out there. It's yeah. and you, do little, you do that ceremony. You walk to the arch. That, that was what a day that is. It's just exactly. You get a little nerves and you get your forget with your fellows. And it's like, all right, let's 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 go have some fun. And you realize how, how fun it's going to be for the next however long you're there man and for you i read that you love to stay on the ice i talked to some teammates that talk about your commitment to always just being on the ice and trying new things and then doing it in games um how beneficial was it for you to be at a school like that i know when you got there they for sure had the three on three rink they actually finished oh yeah when i was there and it was like all access anytime uh, they obviously have the shooting outside and then you obviously have an unbelievable gym there. Um, so just talk about just full access for a kid like you that loves being on the sheet. It's as good as it gets. Yeah, we it, it was that was the best part about it, which is how much you could focus on the hockey there. Like, yeah, you're going to school and you're, you're being a high school student, but it, you're there for hockey. We all know it. Everyone knows it. So it was just it was so nice being able to have that three or three. It was awesome. We'd play there in the spring, too, when 
when season was over, we'd go and just work on skills, play a little three on three, work on tight area stuff. But that that shooting spot outside was great. We loved my for some reason my team like we loved going there because we had nothing else to do and we would just want to hang out. So we'd go to the rink every day and we we probably shot thousands of pucks there or in that in the two years. It was that was the best part for me. It was just like you have whatever you want there. That like so that gym's huge. We go play basketball there and just and it, like even away from the hockey part of it, just you get to like grow and learn that as a human too. You get to get on the sheet whenever you want. You get to just be with your boys. It was it was great. And those facilities there are amazing and they're just getting better and better every year. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. For me, I remember just being like, wow, I don't have to ask my mom or dad if I can go to the rink or to take me to the rink. I could just walk over anytime. I could go shoot pucks. I could go for a run on the track. Like this place is unbelievable. You could do it's unlimited resources there at all times and it's it's really just unbeatable yeah are you uh are you still in contact with your guys there like do you have a group of guys like maybe four or five guys or i don't know how big your group was there of your your boys Mm -hmm. yeah definitely i mean there's i definitely got a bunch a couple guys i really still keep in touch with my buddy derek moy he lives up in boston goes to harvard he was he was one of my roommates and actually was able to convince him and his mom and his dad to let him go to Shattuck like two months before that like registration period or school started because we needed a goal. We didn't have a goalie and he was a goalie and he was like, all right, we'll do it. So we went and we lived there. We lived together two years and we still talk every day. John Farinacci I lived with, I know we had some fun. We, us three lived together. We had some funny stories. You remember when those, there was those clowns going around scaring, like killing people. Remember when that was happening in like 2015? That's from when I was at Shattuck. So we were like, boarding up our windows and scared each other and stuff so we still talk about all that stuff and send all those videos we took back and forth all the time so yeah it's just you make bonds with these people with people and it's just they stick forever they really do it's yeah, it's unbelievable and it's like it all goes by so fast and you you look back on it and you're like wow that was that was so fun that was so long ago and it feels like it was yesterday man and so i only played my bantam year but you went yeah. back the net you went back the next year and a lot of people don't know this about Shattuck, but when you play for the Bantam team when you get recruited to play for the Bantam team you are on that team like if you get accepted you make the team you are on that team but everybody else except for that team is trying out for their spots so you're going in there and you know you're paying a lot of money and you have no idea what team you're going to be on sure your goal was actually to make prep or, or was it you know so i'm actually curious you know what your goal was going in there and then how it was making the u16 team and playing u16 yeah i mean i definitely was sh- hoping to make prep uh we think we had one guy cam york make it obviously look at him now he's pretty good he's in the nhl but um we yeah it was it, it stunk a little bit when you, you don't make the team you want, but for me, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm still in a great spot. I'm at a great school. Like I made, I made the 16 U, the highest tier team. Like this is going to be great. I still got a chance to compete for a national championship. Why won? We won the national championship my Bantam year. I think we went like 51 and five that year. We didn't lose to an American team once all year. Uh, so it was just like, also trying to top that year is going to be really hard. So it's, you have these high expectations. And unfortunately that, that 16 year, I, I broke my leg in, uh, in December. I got hit, I got hit leg on leg and shattered my right tibia. So I was out for like, I was out for three months, made it back for nationals. And we, we lost in, in the finals that year, which stunk, but it was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely hard to not make the team you want, but it was still, we, it was one of the best years of my life. Like you say, it was just no matter what team you're on there, you, you have so much fun and you just, it's un, it's unlike anything else. Yeah. Yeah. You're damn right, man. That's, uh, I couldn't have said it better myself, but uh, then you go on, you play for the Chicago steel, just like a powerhouse organization in the USHL. I actually played for the Chicago steel, a little cup of coffee, seven games. Uh, I think it's Hinsdale high school, right? Hinsdale. I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly. What it might've been different. Oh, really? But uh, I went to a public school there. Actually, told a story here many times. Got suspended my first day walking into the school for having a tin in my back pocket. But <laughs> um, but anyways, man, just talk about your experience in Chicago. Like, Also an all-access place. I remember we used to play poker at the rink at night, something that we couldn't do like in Sioux Falls or any other USHL team. Like, You can ha- have access get to the rink at night and, and chill with the boys. Yeah, so that was... Chicago was awesome. It was I, I went to I went to public high school my first year also. 
Uh, I went to, it's called St. Charles North, the place I went, but it was, uh, it was, it was hard doing that because you, you go to school from seven to 12 and you get picked up at 12 30 and you go to the rink and you're kind of feel like you're cramming everything in, but you're not, because like you said, I was, I was at the rink till eight, nine o'clock PM some days, just doing whatever I needed to do. Cause they don't kick you out and you get all the time in the world you want there. So that was, it, it was fun going to high school and still being like a kid too, though. Like, and being like, not just a robot hockey player because you get that you can stay at the rink for as long as you want there you can be you have time to be be a human being and and live your life a little bit but it was chicago was one of the best places ever it was we we did so much skill work and and development there and we brought daryl belfry in and had adam nicholas in we just they gave every single possible resource for us to have success there it was great did you also do a little fishing uh, along the ponds, along the side of the road? Um, in, Chica- in Chicago? Yeah. One of your former teammates. We fished a little bit, yeah. One of your J- former- Jeremy Bushler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We fished at a – oh, yeah. Me and him fished at a, this little church pond that was stacked with largemouth. This guy, Jeremy, I love you, Bushler. He had no idea how to fish, and he caught some big fish out of there. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, he he just said he goes yeah. I just remember we we would fish in the little ponds on the side of the road on the way home. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We would stop every time because I love fishing. You know that I love it. Oh yeah, you do. So like talk about talk about when when Belfry would come in or uh, Nicholson would come in and like do some skill work. Like were you was it just a ton of new stuff for you guys or were you just like like oh I, like this is easy stuff. Like was it very intentional? So it was, it was different. It was definitely different. And it was, we would do, we would have skill work in the morning. So my second year, mostly for me, for actually for my first year, we, I would do it after practice because I was in school, but my first year we'd come in and we'd, we'd have a group in the morning who would do it. And it was, it was all very different. A lot of it was stuff like you could, you could understand like changing the angles of the shots, but then they'd add these like 10 extra layers to it that you would never think about of, airflow, where the goalie's feet are, how the goalie's positioned, what the goalie has to do from this angle, where to shoot the puck to have the highest probability to score from this angle. It was like so technical. And then they would vid- they would film every movement you did and you'd go over every single weight shift, every outside edge, every inside edge, every tote, every puck touch. You knew exactly what you needed to do and where you needed to put the puck at- for every to execute every move. And it was, it was phenomenal. It really was amazing to see that. And I still use all the stuff I was taught there in my game today and, and in practice. And when, you know, there's a lot of the shooting stuff we did this year, coming off those angles down, that's all from Belfry. I got that stuff and just learning how to do it there in Chicago. Pretty cool. And you guys had a great season that year. How far did you go in playoffs? I saw you played 11 games, 15 points. Talk about yep. the playoff run. We, yeah, that was a, that was a fun run. We made it to, we made it to the Clark cup final that year. We lost, to Sioux Falls in, t- in three. We got swept, lost two there, lost one in Chicago. That was that was cool. That was a special – we had a special team because we had a really good team, but we didn't have, like, a crazy good team. Like, we, we came together as a group, and we were just – like, we had the most heart in, in the East on that on that team, and we just wanted more than every other team. And that was uh, – that is what helped – that year really helped me get drafted in the second round because I had a great year, and that playoff run was – we did so. We did so well. It just made everyone look so much better. We we were we played so well together. Our lines were all going, and it was we came up short in the end. But it was still like one of the most fun I've had playing extra hockey like that. It was great. And and in that year, you got called to the national team and played four games with them. How did that come about? And talk about that experience. Yeah. So I went to the forty man camp pre Chicago and didn't make that team. So that's why I went to Chicago and played in the USHL. But they um they called uh, in November that year and asked if I wanted to go to Czech Republic with them for the one of the four nations or five nations tournaments, whichever one it was. And how could you say no to that? It was a dream of mine always to play for the national team and play for the program. So regardless of whether it's one game or ten games, I would I would have said yes every time. And that was that was fun. I got to I know all those guys in the team, I grew up with a lot of them because they're all my age, obviously. So those are a bunch of my friends, and it was just it was it was a great experience being able to play for them too. Yeah, you never know when you're going to be able to represent your country and wear that that crest, and you never know if it's going to happen again. 
So to pass up on that opportunity is you cannot do that. And when no. did you commit to BU in this whole process? So the, the BU commitment came after my freshman year at Shattuck. Um, wow. So you were, one of the earliest, you were one of the earliest in your uh, I, I, yep. announce a commitment tweet on Twitter. You're like proud to announce. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank course. you. Thank you to of everyone course. who's helped you know me along love. the way. Every... <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted to be the first. I wasn't the first. I think, I think. I don't even remember his first movie. Of course, you wanted to go. You wanted to be one of the first in your age class and send that tweet out and get a hundred retweets on it or whatever it is. But yeah, that was it. Was obviously I had a good year that first year chat again. I never got talked by Northeastern, so don't even. I, you might ask that souls. But I don't. I don't even want them to get brought up. But uh, it, it was. It was between my final decision was between BU and BC, and I was visiting both in, in the same weekend and. BU was, I loved BU. I, lo I loved every second of BU. I loved the three years I spent there. I, and the, that place is awesome. It's one of the, one of the best ranks in college hockey, in my opinion. I think it's just that you get everything you want there. It's awesome. You get the city vibe. You get the kind of get the college campus vibe. And it's just, it's like, it's like you're a grown, grown adult living in a city, but you're a college kid. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's B, yeah BU. I mean, that's sick. That's one of these schools, you know, uh, Northeastern is actually not one of those schools. Like when I was younger, I never thought about Northeastern, to be honest with you. I was like BU, <laughs> BC, I uh, was in North Dakota, Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. I think, I think that's why I fell in love with Northeastern is because I had no clue that Northeastern was even a school like growing up until they showed up to one of my games and was like, uh, hey, I'm, what you? Uh, I'm Jason Smith. Uh, <laughs> from from northeastern i'm like what is northeastern it sounds cool <laughs> like and so i like do some research and i like see like oh wow like look at the passion behind this school like wow the campus looks brand new oh it's in downtown boston oh no, like, dude it? this guy said hey z we love your game and z looks at him and goes i love you <laughs> 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 that, that's what happened but I actually reached out to uh, um, Max Kaufman, who's a lot older than oh. you guys played together in BU, an awesome guy. I played with him in Savannah for a cup of coffee in the, mm -hmm. in the coast. But he said a lot of good things about you. He said, kid is super skilled, nasty, but also has a lot of grit to him at the same time. Not afraid of anything out there and likes to chirp for sure. He's a little kid at heart, lives on the ice, um, you know, all this stuff. But he also said... Long Island boy, classic South Shore kid. And I'm just wondering, like, what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I mean, his girlfriend's from Long, Long Island. Or, so she he's he spent a lot of time out here. So he gets it. But it's just that you spend time outside, wanting to be fishing on a boat, on the beach, on the water somewhere. It's just like, that's the, Long, the South Shore Long Island vibe. You just go with the flow sometimes. A lot of uh, a lot of guys that I hit up, I also talked to like Matt Barnaby, who was with you in Chicago Steel mm -hmm. for a bit. Like all these guys say that your approach to the game is almost like has been pro for so long in the sense that you're always working on your game, always trying to find ways to improve, even as a young kid. Um, literally everyone that I talk to says that about you. So just uh, talk about just like that love for the game and always looking for ways to improve and mm -hmm. just where that comes from and and just like. Mm -hmm. Fuck, man, that's unbelievable. Like, legit, six guys I hit up all say, this guy loves being on the ice and always putting in extra work. It's, yeah, I mean, my dad just instilled that in me when I, since I've been a young kid. He was, anytime I'd ever touch the ice, he would make me put full gear on to tell you practice like you play. You practice like you play. You don't go out there and gloves on your stick. You you get fully dressed and you, and I, since then, like, I would go to you, bring me to free skates when I was a kid and just go shoot the puck and go out there and just skate around and have fun. And I, he would, he would have to drag me off the ice when I was a kid. And it's, like, I just, I think it's so valuable to just have, put that extra work on the ice and then just really, like, hone in your skills that you're good at and, and find those. Because once you find what you're good at and you're really good at, and you can really cap, like, make that even better. And, you know, it gives you more room to work on the rest of your game, too, while still doing that. So I... I just love being on the ice. It's in, it's an escape from the world for me. You just get to go out and just shut everything off. You shut everything out and just focus on hockey and just playing the sport we get to play for a job. Like this, it's how can you be? How could you not love that? 
No, a hundred percent, man. Like I know you're a gamer. Like you, you mentioned like the and ones and all those, uh, everyone says you're a gamer, but, uh, uh, you played at BU for three years. Obviously, you talked about it, an unbelievable spot. I was wondering, your sophomore year, you only have 15 games played. Um, did you have, like, an injury that year? Or... No, we weren't allowed to play until January that year because of COVID. They, oh, the, school wouldn't right. let us, the school wouldn't let us play. So yeah. we played 15 games and then played, like, we played one tournament game. And that's it. That, that was, that was, what did you say, Zach? 15 games? Like, they – I'm pretty sure we were supposed to play you guys, and then it got like postponed. Then we were supposed to play you again, postponed. It was like this is this is absurd. The 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 school put the handcuffs on the Boston University men's hockey team. Yep, they did. They um, our first game of the season, we had we had home and home versus Providence. Game at seven, game at four. They wouldn't let me play in the game at seven because I had COVID uh, a month earlier and I wasn't fully cleared yet. So they they let me, but I was able to play in the next game, at four p.m. Less than twenty four hours after. Less than 20, yeah, that's crazy, man. That's, that's crazy. That's banana so, hockey. Yeah, that's been yeah. But the Savannah following banana. year, the following year, you play uh 34 games, 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. That's a great year in NCAA. But you do, I mean, I think what anyone would do when they find out that ASU has a men's <laughs> hockey team. And you you transfer there. I remember, you know what's funny is uh, when I, I was committed D1 to Lake Superior State, but then I had decommitted when I was actually with the Steel. And then I ended up going to St. John Sea Dogs. And when two months after I signed with the St. John Sea Dogs, we were sitting on the bus, I remember, on a road trip to Cape Breton. And it gets announced ASU is going to have a men's D1, D1 hockey team the next year. <laughs> I remember you, you, all you the like Oh, no, dude, there's literally uh, <laughs> me and two other guys were uh, doing, ah, shoulda, coulda, woulda, man, shoulda, yep. coulda. Yep. I always said, if there was ever a chance I could go there, I would, just because it's Arizona State and it's a different side of the world. It's a different side of the country, too. I would love to see that. So after my third year, I felt that personally I needed a little change in scenery, a little change in life just to – I went through some mental things, so just to get kind of really step away from that part of my life and – and start over and try and get this one fresh year. And everything there was great. It was arguably one of the best years of my life. It was, the rink was beautiful. The the college is beautiful. The state's beautiful. And the hockey was great. We, our, our, our staff was amazing there. Our team was amazing there. And it was, it was just wonderful. Like I met some of the best people, some of my best friends I'll have for life there. And it was, it's Arizona. Like you walk every day and you know, you have to put on flip flops and shorts. It's like, you walk out of your room and you're happy. It's it's sunshine and every day it's and you get to go to the rink and just work. Like our Fridays in the summers are pool workout phase. We all go work out in the pool. It's like where else are you gonna do that? What that's unbelievable. Is, that that is unbelievable. You just I think you just got a lot of more a lot more recruitments for the Arizona State after that little uh rant on them. What were what were some of the biggest challenges you faced at Boston University? I know you just briefly touched on the mental mm-hmm. side of it. But just talk about some of the um, adversity you went through. Yeah, I mean, obviously with COVID, it's everyone went through and it's hard, but it's those are some of the best, biggest years for you to grow as a player and turn into like more of a of a man and a professional as your your first two to three years of college. So it was when when you're going through some mental stuff there, it makes it a little bit harder and you just kind of learn how to deal with it and you learn how to get through it but once you realize that you have more around you and more support around you and you can branch out and talk to people and and the guys around you they're your friends and teammates also and they're always there for you so that was something that was probably the most adversity I went through was just kind of finding the how to get over the hump of feeling like okay I'm dragging I'm dragging I'm dragging how do I how do I get over this hump and it, I turned to my friends I turned to the people around me and I turned to to my teammates and they were all awesome and they helped and and you like I said you learn how to go about your day and just get a little bit better every single day, get a little bit better every single day. And then once you start looking at the positives and things, you, you kind of get to just be more happy and, and you get to just be more free and play more free and, and live more free. Absolutely. That's very well said. When I, when I was going through some tough times uh, and I wasn't playing as much, I was told by one of the older guys, like you really need to lean into the team and lean into your teammates and don't isolate yourself. And I think that's a mistake a lot of guys make is when they're not playing as much as they think they should or 
Uh, they're not playing as good as they think they should. They tend to isolate themselves from the team and think like, oh, I need to be doing extra work or be on my own and work on skills that'll help me be better. But I think you need to lean on the guys that are your brothers and your teammates and just be with them and get back to being a kid and being just having fun. Like this is why we play hockey is because we have fun with our friends and leaning into the team will help you get through what you're going through. And clearly uh, it helped you because you had a tremendous year um, when you did go to Arizona state. Uh, obviously your last year at BU was a great year, 25 points, 34 games. Then you go Arizona state out West and you put up over a point a game. So you're much happier. Things are living. Talk about leaning into the team when you were uh, your first year at ASU because you're the new guy on campus coming from BU. I'm sure there was oh, a lot yeah. of high expectations. Led the team in points. Is that good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, of course, you come in, you're the new guy. You're you're a senior in college, and you have all the experience, and, like, you know what, what needs to get done to make the tournament if you've been there. Like, you understand, like, how you should carry yourself. But still, you're – you don't want to come in and be starting bossing people around just because you think that like you're still a new guy in there. And so you, you feel it out and you learn how to, how to lead a little bit different than how you would if you, because I tried to be a leader there and I, and I thought I was a leader on the team. And with, with the changes, you, you go to the guys who've been there. I went to donor, although he was a sophomore, he was way, his, his maturity level was way above for hockey and, and being in the room for Josh was way above a sophomore that year. And he was, I leaned into him a lot. He was my roommate. I leaned into Jacob Semek, who'd been there, Demetrius Kumanzis, who's been there at ASU, ASU for five years at that point, Chris Grando, another Long Island guy. And those are those are some of my best friends who they helped me make the transition because you're you're never really fully comfortable stepping on a team for the first time. You don't know 95% of the guys. So they they broke the shell. I went there early in the summer and just spent time with them for – for two, three months at a time, and we just spent time together and time together, and that's you. We became uh, we bonded so so close and became such a close group. Mm, very cool. You were drafted by uh, the Detroit Red Wings. You ended up not signing with the Red Wings and signing with Toronto. Like, when was that decision made? I know for college guys, usually they can decide at the end of their college career, or I, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's. It's the end of your, once you're drafted, you have to wait to the end of your college career, four years if you don't sign to become a free agent. And that, that decision wasn't made until after the year and uh, spoke a lot with just family and, and agents and everyone and just decided that we'll try and find a more clear path to the next, to the NHL, to get to where you want to be and, and where you're going to have more personal success because it, at the end of the day, you need to do what's best for you and a lot of the time and regard it, it's just, what's best for your development and where you think you can see yourself going, getting up to the highest level. So that the decision was hard, but not, well, it was just like, it was tough. It was tough it was, because I'm torn between, obviously you want to go to the team that drafted you. That's awesome. You want to, you want to, that's everyone dreams of that. That's your dream as a kid. You play for the team, you get drafted by and all that. But just what I say, just, I, I found do what's best for me, do what's best for what I think is going to give me the best path to get path to get to the NHL. Uh, you mentioned sometimes you got to do what's best for you. I think uh, all the time you got to do what's best for you. As athletes, like obviously we play a team sport, but at the end of the day, you're the only guy that's really in your corner throughout the whole process, throughout your whole career, through the dark times and the great times. The one guy that's always there is you yourself, right? So I think you always got to do what you think is best for you because at the end of the day, if you fuck up, the only person you can blame is you. And if you like don't fuck up, like, per se, like if you just follow the path that's there and just don't trust your own instincts and then it doesn't lead you to where you want to go, then, you know, you could end up being a victim and pointing fingers and stuff. So at the end of the day, you always got to do what you think is best for you because it's your career. And at the end, wherever you end up, it's it's on you, you know? exactly couldn't have put that better myself you're totally right you were saying zach did you go to the draft yeah i uh, my draft was in vancouver uh, i was there had a ton of family there as you know my family travels well so it was it, it was special i got a huge portrait of my house it's like this big of like my entire family all with me it was it was the coolest thing ever man that's a, a huge... long 
that's a long way from Long Island. Yeah, <laughs> it's across the, <laughs> the continent. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, it was, it was so cool though. It's that's a moment you'll you get. It's for once in a lifetime. It's to have all of them there, and and my grandfather who passed two years ago was there. So just to have, be able to have everyone there was so cool. That that and is very cool. Did you? That's a time. Did did you have a gut feeling that Detroit was going to draft you, or was it totally surprised? How was that? <clears throat> Uh, I didn't know going into it. My dad said he had a gut feeling because I don't know, but he, did just he said say that after was, you got I, drafted or did he say it before? Of course he said it after. <laughs> said it after. But he, I trust him with those things because he's, it's not the first time that's happened where he said stuff before it happens. But, uh, I, I didn't really, I didn't care. I didn't care where I went. I just wanted to go somewhere. You know, yeah. it was, I, I was just happy to be there. I was happy to see, hear my name. Like, and he named it called wherever it may be or wherever it would have been. But Detroit was – that's there's such a cool organization to be drafted to with all the history they have. It was just like – it really was a dream come true. Yeah, that's sick, man. Original six. You're talking to two guys here that did not get drafted. So could be a once in a lifetime, could be zero in a lifetime. I got, <laughs> zero, drafted, but I I got, I got drafted in two leagues, the, the NAHL. <laughs> And the L N A H. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> two leagues. I the, love the it. Reverse too. Pretty sick, actually. <laughs> I love it. But uh, so you mentioned, you know, like making the decision to not sign with Detroit, and then you signed with the uh, Toronto Marlies, or I think it was an American League deal, right? Yeah. yeah right. So you so you signed with the Toronto Marlies, and uh, obviously, yeah. like you got to think that Ryan Hardy played a big role in that you mentioned playing for the Chicago steel and how much you loved it there and how much you grew as a player and all their resources. And then the GM that you had there who was pretty hands-on is now in Toronto. And, you know, you have an opportunity to go there with someone that you're familiar uh, at the pro level, which is hard to find. Yeah. I mean, having Hardy there has been great. He obviously have a good relationship with him. I have since we were in Chicago and, He's a great GM. He's a great guy. He's always looks out for his players and he wants the best for everyone. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was an easy decision once they, they sent the offer over. And then on top of that, I had six or seven guys I had played with already and I've been very, very friendly with. I lived with uh, Josiah Slavin this year. He was one of my really good friends when I played in Chicago with him and his wife. So I knew him, Mateo Pietro We had a bunch of guys who Nick Eberzizi. So I was, it was the most comfortable you could ever possibly be on your first professional team. Yeah. Just living in life and hockey. But, uh, and that, that was also a huge part of the decision. And how was that transition pro? Because, you know, you got that one year in junior when you weren't in school that second year, but I mean, you're living in a billet family. People are cooking you meals. I mean, now you're playing pro and you're, you're all on your own. Uh, so talk about just the transition. You obviously, you had a roommate that obviously helps, yep. but. How, how was that transition for you? Uh, it was it was hard at first. Uh, so my my well, last year before that ASU, I lived uh, I lived in an apartment and we barely lived at school. I did online school. All my classes were online. It was it was fairly easy. So it was I that kind of prepared me a little bit. But once you step into pro, it's just so different. It's like you got grown men, you got guys with families. Collins, I miss you. You got <laughs> and Sid, but you, like, it's just different. It's it's a different life. You're not spending every day at the rink with the guys. Like you're doing your own thing. Once you're done with with the rink, you go home, cook your own meals. But it was uh, even harder for me was the hockey aspect, because like, I had never I had never been scratched in my life. And the first twenty games, 15, 20 games of the season, I was getting in and out of the lineup. So it was it was just hard. And this guy right here, Zach, he he's probably obviously he's been through it. He's he was in through it in Milwaukee he's been through it a bunch of times so he understood how what you got to do to maintain your mind and your and your body and get a little healthier get a, stay a little healthier get a little stronger was just the motto I learned to live by because of him it's just every time you're not on the ice use it and you're scratch uses use it as an opportunity to just get a little better somewhere else yeah 100 percent. that's Z's you motto you, you get to stay healthy you get a little stronger every year or I'm sorry Every game you miss at this point in your career is another game you will play later in your career. That's a great way to look at it. Get some Wi-Fi. Better Wi-Fi for you fellas. Oh, yeah. We might have to redo the whole pod now. You sound, <laughs> <different>. <laughs> I sound way better. Yeah. So 
but obviously guys like Z helped you when you're going in and out of the lineup. But I mean, the, the mental warfare, like, like we just mentioned earlier, it's a team sport, but you're kind of in it alone. Sometimes you got guys like Z who are great teammates who are going to help you uh, guys that have been there. But when you're in the stands, man, those thoughts that are eating at you, like, man, I'm healthy and coach doesn't even think I'm good enough to like help the team, you know? And I, I remember like all these thoughts, like I've been in and out almost my whole career, but you know, the best way to, to counter those is just by working your bag off, you know? And like, the more you work, the more confidence you gain just through work and talk about getting through that. And then, I mean, you ended up playing 45 games, your rookie season, you put up four goals, 11 assists. Um, talk about also the mental warfare of like not being almost a point per game for the first time in your career, you know, obviously as a guy who puts up points his whole life and just expects that out of himself, how did that uh, affect you mentally? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely just, like you said, when you're sitting up in those stands and it doesn't matter how the team's doing, you're in your head, you know you want to be on the ice. You want to you wanna be out there. You want to help that team win. You want to help. You just feel helpless, and you know you can do it. So it's just a matter of not giving up and not not giving up on yourself. Because once you give up on yourself, it's, it's hard to come back from that. But And like you said, going from a guy who scores – a lot and having a lot of points to to being like that or having a stat line like that this year it's it's hard but it's I I was put in a different role this year than I than I'm used to playing and I think that once you're able to take understand that you're not going to be doing what you you're used to doing and just having to go and find a new way to play hockey and a different way to play the game and just because that's where the way you're going to help the team more and that's that's how I handled it it's just okay I don't I'm not scoring a lot of points right now. Um, how else can I help the team? How else can I help this team win it and, and be the best for the guys next to me? And that was whether that was grinding in the corners if I had to, or going and taking ten hits or fighting. I, it's whatever it needed to be. I would have done it 100. percent Man, yes. it's crazy. I'm telling you, you have no idea right now how valuable this is for your career because it's funny. Like it's the first time. Oh, I'm not gonna say it's the first time you face adversity, but like. On the elite prospects, it looks like it's the first time that you um, had some battles, you know, like in terms of, you know, not putting up the numbers you usually do and stuff. And guys like you that find way that are like, OK, I'm going to find ways to contribute to the team in other ways and learn how to like grind in the corners, you know, I'll fight if I have to and all this. You're a young kid, man, and you're going to get your opportunity to play the role that you that you're used to. And when you do get that opportunity, all the things that you learned this year to contribute in other ways are going to be added into your game and you're just going to be that much better of a player. So man, exactly. I commend, I, yeah, I commend you for having that mindset as a young kid, as your first year pro, you know, you're drafted in the NHL. You don't sign an NHL contract. You sign an AHL contract. You're trying to work your way up to the NHL, but you're getting scratched in the AHL. You're like, man, I'm trying to go there, but I'm not even playing games here. You know, I know how that gets to your head. So to have the mindset of and have guys like Z help you with this, but have the mindset of I'm going to find ways to contribute any way I can. That's the only way to look at it, man. It's the only mm -hmm. way to look at it. So when you think about it, it's, it's only so little of it's in your control. You can only, you can only do so much to get yourself on the ice. And, and that's so much is just putting in the work and working hard and showing that you care that you're, you're willing to do anything to get on the ice and to be to the next level and to, to succeed. And that's just, that's the mindset you have. And like you said, when you get that chance, you got to, you got to take it. You got to be opportunistic and you got to just, you can't look back on anything at that point. You get it, you go. That's how mm -hmm. I think about it. You, you get that opportunity and you go and you never look back. You totally embraced the position that you were put in at the beginning of the year, knowing and believing in yourself through your work that when you get your opportunity, you're going to produce. And I remember we would have these conversations when you, you maybe you weren't playing and, and just be like, man, like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Like you're going to get in. And when you get in, we're going to dominate. And that's exactly what happened. I like <laughs> that, that we completely controlled game as a fourth line. Like we did. I'm talking the puck is the puck is in our end for three or seconds straight minutes. And then boom, 
We get a shift and it's completely in the other zone for the full 40 seconds. Like we should have scored three times, but it didn't go in. And then we change in the O zone and everybody's like, great shift boys. And, and then we score through, and we score. And then we score. Yes. Not on, not online, but we score. And that's all we need. That's what, that's what we were. That's what we were this year. We were that we were switch tides around you. You need this game to flip. You put us on the ice and we will flip this game. And that's why we got to play more because the first, like, I don't know, 15, 20 games, we really didn't have much of a role uh, like we did after Christmas. And we, when we went on that long road trip, it was like, uh, play, <laughs> well, <that's> uh, cool. <laughs> literally, it was like, we got a fourth line. We got a legit fourth line to play. Like, and yes. we, we, what did we win? We, we were hot on that road trip too. We yeah. embraced it. Exactly. We embraced it and it was so much fun. And the points, you know, don't really reflect how good we played. And I still feel like, you know, you gave me a lot of breakaways and backdoor passes that I didn't put in. And there's a lot more points that we left out there. So we have that believability and that mm-hmm. time of like this season, we're going to take that step. And even if you put us on the fourth line with no power play, no penalty kill, like we'll no. still find a way to produce and help the team win. And yeah, those and, guys are invaluable, man. And it's just exactly. It's so so glad we were able to have this experience and hopefully run it back. But in a little, we get some more. Like we talked about you being on the ice a lot and stuff like that. Like, what does a, a pregame routine look like for you? Do you have like a pregame yes. routine you've been doing? Great question, because I need we need to talk about this. Zach wants me to get on the ice before the games. I don't. That's what he wants. I know. Morning skate. Yeah. I'm not a morning skate guy. I don't like it. I, I get it. I understand that I have in my told myself that I'm going to try it this year. I'm going to do it. I cause, cause why not? But I've never been a morning skate guy. I just don't like touching my equipment really like before, before the game. I don't like going, I don't know. I'd rather just sit and like stretch and do things. But when, once we get to game time, I'm a, I like to play sewer. Obviously I'm a sewer guy, but for me, it's all, when I'm done with sewer, I go and just work my hips a little bit and do my hip mobility and just get my mind right. But that whole time during the sewer, I'm I'm thinking of the game. I'm thinking of hockey, having fun and warming up and sweating. But I, I in my head, I'm running through plays. I'm running through what I'm going to be doing. I'm running through getting pucks off the wall. I'm running through passing. And we had a – me and Zach had a great warm routine uh, on the ice. We would just snap the whole warm-up. We would just – it doesn't matter where we were on the ice. You find the other person, you snap a puck to them. And Rip it and Rip. just make sure that just because we always knew where the pass is coming from. Like if I saw a puck coming at me, I knew it was coming from him and I, I got to catch that pass. I have to catch it. It's just a read and react thing. And it's just, I think it just sharpens you up a little bit for the game. Yes. No, it does. Awesome. It'd be hilarious too. We'd be zipping the puck. Right? <laughs> you have like 18 other guys skating on the ice, zipping the puck. Other guys <laughs> would have pucks and we'd like hit their stick. Both of us would like, look away. Yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> And it was the worst because it would always, it would always for me, I would always hit lash. I would hit lash with a puck like four times in warm ups every time. And I would just look away. That's way better than hitting Cliff. I would hit Kyle Cliff yeah. every time. Bro. <laughs> 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 That's but yeah, I just, I'm a big stretch whatever i my hips are my mo where i need to just keep the loosest so that's what i work on the most and just like work on making sure i'm there for my hips and there up here yeah and and you were always there up there i don't know how your mm-hmm. hips felt but you were always there because <laughs> <laughs> i would Those are my like, routines i'd be like duck like man you got to get on the ice for morning skate like not because it'll make you better at night but because it's your first year bro i've never seen a first year not morning Crazy. skate like once and he's like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's my routine. I'm like, dude, somebody's going to say something eventually, but you just were sharp every game. So it was like, fuck, let him do what he wants to do because it's working. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's what they said. They ever, anyone who asked me was like, dude, I just, I'm better without it uh, right now. And this, you're, you're not going to change my routine right now in the middle of the year. So don't try it. You forgot one thing about your routine and it's what you Which- hold in your left hand and drink. A quad espresso. Oh yeah, I, that's a clock. I drink a quad espresso before the games. And that's oh, just by like, the way. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I got a qu- and I have one of the mo- I have one every morning now too. It's bad. That's insane. Yeah, I just, I, when I when I was in Toronto, I wouldn't try. I tried not to spend as much money on coffee because I, I like to buy Starbucks a lot, and I, it's not it's not a cheap drink when you get a quad espresso. No. So, I would just get them before games, but 
and then Bellows would give me an extra espresso shot every game too, and it was I would just shake. You'd be ten espressos deep before puck drop. National yeah. anthem. Why wouldn't you? What yeah. uh, I, 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 keep going. What's something that you're really hammering on this off season? Something that you really want to improve on? Part of your game or just? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So for me right now, the thing I need to improve on most is just when I shoot, I got to calm down a little bit. I'm shooting the puck with everything I possibly have and trying so hard to score because I'm a goal scorer. It's what I pride myself on. And when you score four goals in a year, you squeeze the stick a little too hard. So I, I think that for, I was just trying so hard to score and trying so hard to do all these things that I was kind of overdoing it. So what I've been working on a lot is just like slowing down, calming down, getting the puck and finding like what we call it here is we call it getting your apex, your shot apex, finding the apex of your shot. It, it's not necessarily your shot, but it's like moving your feet and your weight and, and any direction where you can find an attack. We have four nets on any net and you're in a good spot for that puck. So, but with that, I'm working on just slowing down and more just picking corners, picking spots and not trying to put the puck through the net. Cause that's, I feel like that was where, I kind of had a downfall was I was just trying so hard to, I'm like, I'm not used to being as strong as I am or as big as I am. So I'm not used to having it. I'm trying to shoot the puck so hard. I've always done it like that. Cause I've always been a little smaller guy. Mm-hmm. That's great. The goalies at, at the pro level are so good. They're usually in the right spot. So it, it's accuracy over power. Like in, mm-hmm. as you get older, cause that's what the goalies are thinking. They're like, all right, I just have to cover this part of the net. Yep. If I, like, I'm not going to cover the corner. He has to hit the corner to score. Mm-hmm. And if he's that half a step off his spot and you see that spot, you don't need to pound it through. But that's the that's my main goal this summer is that and just putting on some a little bit more weight, getting a little stronger. Yep. And making sure your truck doesn't get stolen. I don't even want to talk about so, it. My truck got stolen this year. It happened Toronto. to Nico like 15 years ago, but no, not 15 years ago. It happened to me like five, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. This was the worst. This was the worst three days of the year for me. It was. It should have been the best. We had our mentors trip in Laval, so my dad was in town. All the parents or whoever was was everyone was in town. It was supposed to be great. We had so much fun. It was a great weekend, and it's the first game of the weekend, and we're three quarters of the way through the second period. And I've touched the ice once because we've had penalty, 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 penalty. So it's been power play, penalty kill, power play, power play, power play. And I wasn't playing on either of those. So I'm amped up to get on the ice. When I get, I get on the ice and I go to hit Lucas Condado, you guys fridge and I separate my shoulder. So that happens. Watch the game Saturday night. We drive back, we bust back Sunday. I wake up to go to the rink Monday morning and Josiah Slavin was my roommate. So I go, Hey, if you need me to move my car so they can get out of the garage, let me know. He goes, your car's not in the gar- you're in the driveway. I'm like, what are you talking about? I go outside. My car is gone. Stolen out of my driveway. My, my Ram 1500 pickup truck. This thing was sweet. It was new. Oh, it's gone. Dude, and I'm, I'm sitting there in a shoulder brace. Like, what am I supposed to do? And, I- and you have the ring camera so you can see the, the thieves. I have it all on video. <laughs> that's, the same, that's the same thing that happened to me, man. I had a Jeep Wrangler, brand new, uh, and got stolen from right in front of my house, man. I was sitting on my couch when it got stolen. Oh, you, so you, oh, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah. Mine was at like two in the morning, and they totaled. They ended up totaling my car thirty minutes later because they got in a, <laughs> they got in a, they got in a police chase in toronto because they were speeding so they were getting pulled over and they started they decided all right let's run and they they crashed into the barrier and totaled my car so i got the car back but needed to get a new car <laughs> insurance that's company unbelievable. That's but as awesome. me and zach say ble- a blessing in, dis- in disguise because my new truck i love it it's 200 dollars <laughs> cheaper a month so i'm saving money and it's yeah. nicer and it's newer yeah that's awesome, man. Well, dude, like, I don't know, Z, you got anything else? No, man. Uh, this is great. This yeah, is great. this, this has been unreal, out. man. It's been it's been great getting to know you, and uh, we do have a lot of teams in common, but you have a lot more points, man. And I'm really looking forward. To, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to watching uh, your career, man, because uh, I have a feeling you're about to take off. Just I appreciate you, it. Compare, 
just compare the points to pims, not points to points, and then you guys are like the same. Yeah. That's, there we go. Pims like, yeah. We can, we, let's we'll find the common ground in between. And that's where we should be. We'll find the pocket. Dude, this has been awesome, man. Seriously, thanks yes. again. And, and like I said, dude, you're fucking. Let's go. You're the man. Sure, thank you. you're the man, fellas. Thank you, guys. This is a blast. Let's do it again sometime. Yes, sir.